the continued existence of Israel as a nation is one of the greatest arguments for believing that our Creator is as He is described in this book. Really. You'll see that in a moment. Because even those of us who have begun to allow the Spirit of Jesus to run our lives, and certainly those of us who have not, all of us occasionally wonder, yeah, but is this a perfect description of reality? Is this a perfect description of the maker of the universe? I mean, I know I listen to it Sunday after Sunday, but after all, there is the Koran, and there are the Buddhist scriptures, and there is the Book of Mormon, and there are other scriptures that claim to tell us what the creator behind the universe is like. Why should we believe that this one is the only perfect picture? Why should we believe that Moses is right in what he says about God and that Joseph Smith is wrong or that Muhammad is wrong or that Buddha is wrong? After all, they all spoke about miraculous, apparently miraculous events, and they all said that God spoke to them. Why believe this Moses above them? Why believe that he's right and they're wrong? Of course, the real issue is what really did happen when Moses said that God spoke to him? Was it actual fact, or was it a subjective fantasy? When Buddha sat under the bow tree, was it just a subjective vision he had? Or was it a fact, a solid historical fact, God showing himself in a way that you could say was undoubtedly God? When Muhammad had a vision, was that a fact, a historical fact, or was it a subjective fantasy? or illusion. When Joseph Smith claims to have received those golden plates that the Mormons based the religion on, was that a historical fact, or was it just a subjective fantasy that he had at that time? Now, loved ones, really, in our present age, when we're tending more and more towards irrationality, we are, really. More and more, men and women are saying, ah, there is no rationalism anywhere. There is no reason anywhere. All you can have is some kind of experience under drugs or some kind of experience that is hedonistic. That's all a man or a woman can hope for for reality. You can't find reason anywhere now in our universe. You can't find reality by reason. Loved ones, at a time like this, it's really important for us to hold solidly to reason. And honestly, brothers and sisters, if you do, it'll become clearer and clearer to you that the God who is behind our universe is exactly like the God who is revealed here. Let me share with you what one of the old theologians said. He's a man called Leslie. He said, there are certain common sense guidelines to help people determine what is historical fact and what is subjective fantasy. They are just commonsensical guidelines that anybody could work out. And he listed them under four kind of headings. He said there are four criteria that a fact ought to satisfy if it's a historical fact. He said, first of all, it should be such as can be judged by men's eyes and ears. It should be such as can be judged by their senses, their eyes and their ears. Now that eliminates all purely subjective visions that people have. Secondly, he said, it should be something that is done publicly before the world something that is done publicly before the world. It should not 
be something that is done only in the presence of a small group who have a vested interest in believing in it. It should be something that is done publicly for the world to see. Thirdly, and this is kind of interesting in regard to ancient history. He said there should be not only monuments and memorials to this fact, but there should be acts that have been performed down through the centuries to ensure that the public memory has never been distorted. And do you see that? That there should be monuments and memorials and there should be acts continually performed down through the centuries to ensure that the public memory should never be distorted or should never be tampered with. Now that eliminates most of the myths and legends that gathered around the non-Christian religious leaders down through the centuries after years and years after their death. And fourthly, he said, these memorials or these monuments or these customs or these habits or practices should have been present ever from the time when the original fact took place. Now, loved ones, honestly, even if you can't remember all those, if you haven't noted them down and you get the tape afterwards, if you follow through with those four criteria and examine these books in this Bible under those four criteria, you will really become convinced that the revelation of our Creator that you get here is in fact true. And that the things actually happened as they are recorded in this book. 